Well, good day, everybody. Welcome to the Lifetime Training Podcast. And I've got Coach Annika with us today. For those that don't know, you will know. But at the end of the day, Coach Annika is Annika Christ, and she's the Director of Client Optimization and Nutrition for Lifetime. She is an RD. She's a certified personal trainer. And again, most people know her as Coach Annika. And I can't thank you enough, but welcome to the show, Coach Annika. Thank you. Oh, no problem. And an I, intro. I mean, and Annika has been, you know, kind of our go-to. She's the spearhead at so many amazing programs from detox to our, you know, 60 day and really was kind of the person who really grew that thing to what it is today. And I can't thank you enough for everything that you've done for the organization and for people out there. And, you know, the best thing today is we're going to get into some nutrition topics, popular weight loss diets, and, and really how do you get access to coach Annika, even if you're not a member at lifetime. So uh, let's wrap it all up and, and really let's start with your story, Annika, you know, how did you kind of come to find lifetime and kind of, how did you get to where you are today? Yeah, it's funny because when people ask me even like why I became a dietitian, I kind of fell into it. I actually fell in love with fitness first. So I always tell the story of, you know, I watched my mom do fitness videos. Denise Austin is what we would do in our living room, you know, a few times a week. And I fell in love with just like fitness pros and infomercials. So every infomercial, by the time I was like 17 and 19, I bought everything. I always loved to work out. It's funny, but and again, I did sports and stuff, but I wasn't really yeah. good. I wasn't going to be collegiate, but I did fall in love with working out first. And when I was in college, I was undecided for a long time. And I had an advisor that said, what do you think about dietetics? And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what is that? Is it's that a religion? <laughs> yeah, it felt really yeah. like profound. And I, I definitely didn't know what it was. Yeah. And I had a gym membership when I was in college. I was very different than most college kids. Like I already ate healthy and like worked out and people thought it was crazy, but I was like, Oh, I mean, I guess I would check that out. And my whole goal was to get a four year nutrition degree. And then I was going to be an exercise physiologist. And I like fell hard and love and fast with nutrition and was like, Oh my gosh, like everything just started to make sense to me. And I don't know if you've ever felt this, like when you get, you find something you love, you start to realize like, oh my gosh, my whole life I've been doing this. Like I had the very first kid I babysat for, I would have to tube feed and calculate nutrition for him. And I was learning that in college. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what <laughs> And I always share, I grew up with a brother that had type one diabetes. So I like knew what sugar had as an impact as far as metabolism goes and health and, you know, weight composition, all that stuff. So that's kind of how I got into nutrition was just fall, like literally being kind of passed to it. And I was going to do it for fitness, but then I was like, no, I'm going to do this dietitian route. And it was funny because I came into the workforce around 2008 and there was a recession going on basically with the country. And I was hired as a clinical heart dietitian. So you basically were going to be in the hospital teaching people how to eat healthy. And I already had the job. Like I landed it. I was lucky to have a job. And at the same time, I had applied to Lifetime because it just looked interesting on paper what they were doing. And I remember getting down to Arizona and just taking the other job because I was like, well, it's the recession. I'm going to take the job that pays really well and sounds really exciting. And there was a guy that just kept calling me and was just like, you need to come check this out. We want you to consider this position. And all my preceptors were like, do not take a commission job. That's so stupid. Like do clinical. And that's kind of when you go into school yeah. to be a dietitian, they push you there. Clinical mindset. Yep. And I remember walking into a lifetime and thinking, I'm not going to leave. Like I, you know, everyone yeah. knows that the very first time you're like, wow, what is this? And so I called the, the, it was a hospital in Arizona. Cause I was, I started in the Arizona market yep. where you are. And I called them and said, I'm going to take this commission job at a gym. And I loved it. And I, again, I was always comfortable in gym settings during my dietetic internship. I worked at two gyms in Illinois and I just like, oh, I can't wow. get enough of it. So it's and been started, pretty cool. You started at the Palm Valley club too, correct? I did. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. that's that's awesome. Always in my heart. I love that club. Yeah. There's still members there that I yeah. worked with that will like be like, I can't believe what you've become. And I'm like, I'm just so happy you're still a member of yeah. Palm Valley. So. That's great. And one side note too, is actually my father has a gold or ha, I mean, he's passed, but has a gold record for that, for a Denise Austin, uh, workout oh. or a workout album album. Oh. <laughs> I like, I can't, people laugh at that, but I will yeah. say like 
now becoming a parent, I've become a parent during my tenure at Lifetime yeah. too. And that was the thing I learned from my mom. Like we could join her for her workout, but if we interrupted it, if we stopped it, it was like, out. this yeah. is mom's time. And I didn't really get it at that age, but now I'm as yeah. a mom, I'm like, I teach all my clients that like, yeah, you have your time. That's your time. Yeah, that's great. You're parent, you're less stressed, like get your workout on. That's great. So I love Denise. Oh. Great, great. I know. Great, great story. And you know, so let, let's jump in, you know, to some yep. of this content. And obviously, you know, one thing I want to add to is trainers who are also RDs or, or nutrition. I mean, it's, it, it is the ultimate ad to, you know, really explode your career and, you know, have the career that you have. And, and, and another thing too, that I think is worth talking about is obviously, you know, the, it's such a male dominated industry and obviously, you know, we're seeing more and more females expand. And, and, you know, I think it's, it's worth also talking to the female audience a little bit and putting you on the spot here a little on this one sure. is just to talk about how you've been able to navigate, you know, literally coming from Palm Valley, um, you know, and making it all the way up through to, you know, being a director at Lifetime at the corporate office. Yeah. You know, I think for me, when I think about my journey here, I always just think back to like, I was always a problem solver. So I rarely look at what other people are doing and like their success. I love to learn. I'm like you, I'm really curious. I love listening to people's stories, but I was always very like, I'm an individual. I want to figure it out my own way and kind of work my way and solve problems that aren't being solved. And that's like what I do every single day. And I feel like everything I've created at Lifetime, the 60 day, the detox, it was solving some sort of problem that either I discovered or someone told me was a problem. And I was like, okay, let me figure that out. But I always think like when I was at Palm Valley, like I was thrown into this incredibly talented trainer staff where I actually don't think trainers are given enough credit in the nutrition world. Like we do have these certifications and credentials and dietitian is kind of stamped at the highest level of helping with nutrition. But I remember like watching these trainers be like, oh my gosh, some of these guys know more than I do. Like, whoa, like, especially in the bodybuilding world. Like I would follow this one trainer and his name was Alan. And I just remember being like, I want to know everything that's in your head. Like, how do you do that? Like, I didn't learn that in school. But it was such a thing for me because he was like, you know, you can help people with the emotional side of eating, which he was very direct, just like you do this, you do this, and this happens. So he started sending me his clients that were like having a hard time following the, you know, the bodybuilding diet. And he was like, you work with the mental stuff. And <laughs> so I feel like I became like inserted in this team that I was like, oh my gosh, they know so much. But then they're like, wait, you have all this other stuff that we usually can't Beautiful. talk. And so I think for anyone that's coming in into this industry, like be that person too. And I think what I've seen a lot of other dietitians do, even in our you know personal company, is they come in and they try to say no to everyone. Like I'm the nutrition person, I do this, and it never rubs people the right way. Yeah. And I would say I, you know, I always felt good because I, most of my clients was my training staff's clients. I became a referral network for them more than anything. So I really had to go find clients. I was always too busy with everyone else's clients. And I think of a few of them where they, I would just like die because they would tell their, they'd get like, you, they'd introduce me to their person. They're like, I don't know what she does in there, but everyone comes out crying. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh. don't scare them, don't scare them. But like yeah. food is super emotional for some yeah. people. And, you know, I've seen great trainers do really great things with nutrition. And then on the flip side, I've also seen people not really understand their clients because it is male dominated. And I would say it's really a young group of people. So they're not, they haven't dealt with metabolic challenges before. They don't know what it's yeah. like to get your workout in when you have three kids at home. And yeah. I always felt like I could identify really easily with people and then figure out what was their issue. And then I'd give them the right things to like break through those barriers because at the end of the day, That's everyone stressful. knows what to do. They just don't know how to do it yeah. in their life. Honestly. Yeah. And, and that, that it's so powerful what you said. So many things there that I want to highlight on people that are maybe listening to the podcast and just growing in their career is, is one didn't come in. Don't come in. I'm the know-it-all or I'm the nutritionist. You don't do nutrition because, you know, we're going to talk about this and how nutrition has evolved, you know, in, in, you know, in a couple of minutes here and, and how you were able to, and it was the thing that always made sense to everybody is how could in a training staff of 25 or 30 people, how could one, RD, not just be so busy with the amount of members that are in the clubs. Like it, it just should 
be easy, like you said, and, and it's about building those relationships. Um, so that's, that's, that's awesome. You know, and so you started to hit on it and I think it's a great segue into, you know, how have you seen nutrition over the years evolve? Uh, because it has, it's, 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 you know, and, and not that micros and macros have actually evolved, but just how to go about it. Yeah. There's been so many different strategies and I, I like to talk about it with clients. I'm like, do, this, do you see why there's confusion sometimes? It's because yeah. we've gone all these ways. And I actually think of my brother with diabetes and I can think of, he was diagnosed at two years old and he's 41, 42 now. So he's had wow. it for 40 years. Wow. And I can't tell you how many times they flipped the narrative with that of like what to do, what not to do. And I always joke with you. I'm like, I grew up, like I'm one of seven kids. We only got angel food cake for our birthdays because like if he couldn't have sugar, we couldn't have sugar. And like wow. there was never pop yeah. in the house and there was all these extremes. And now with diabetes, it's like, oh, it's you can have carbs, but it, it's figuring it out. And there's different strategies around that. But with nutrition, like I think back to 2008, the things that were going on and I was in Arizona. So I would say Arizona is actually progressive compared to the rest of the nation. Okay. Yeah. Cause our corporate office is in Minnesota. And I remember my very first client came in. And she was telling me she had just gone through the HCG diet. And I was like, what? Like, I, like, I just came from Illinois. I was like, yeah. what's that? <laughs> it's a California thing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. and I, and, you know, everyone was doing CrossFit in 2008. Yeah. And that, like, yeah. I don't even think that made it to Minnesota until yeah. like 2012. So yeah. there's all these things where I was like, wow, I just have to learn. And, you know, people coming in were also on the Atkins diet. And Atkins, again, like I felt bad because I talked to these people and they had all this shame. Like I did this yeah. diet that everyone says is not healthy. And now I feel bad because it worked for me and I'm trying to do it the right way. Yeah. So I also came in at a time where I felt like nutrition wasn't as big of a deal as it is now. Like it was like people still had the mindset, like I can just work off, you know, what I want to lose if my goal is physique based. So specifically around weight loss, that was a big thing or a big okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about eating and calories and all that. But I would say over time, what's probably stayed the most true is usually the things that work in diets, all the specific strategies out there, like whole foods always win, like real food, right? And I think, I, you know, there was, uh, I think it was Nutrisystem back in the day was a really yeah. big deal to these processed, really calorie regimented things. But I found just through my own subjective studying of clients that maybe one out of 10 could just calorie count the re and they, they all could, but they wouldn't succeed. Yeah. And maybe they had a history of yo-yo dieting. Maybe they had a history of thyroiditis or something that metabolically was making it interfere. Yeah. But then I started to think, gosh, you know, in school, they taught me to help people control calories to lose weight. And it's not working. Like it's not working at all. Like one out of 10, maybe. Yeah. So well, and, I, I got to interrupt you on that one too, and, no, it's okay. because it's so powerful. I even see it now in that pendulum, you know, how it swings to the industry. What's right today is wrong tomorrow, wrong tomorrow, right? Yes. Today. But there's so many people I see and, and, and a lot of it is on the Instagram feeds, which is again, one yeah. of the main reasons why we're trying to do these podcasts is to try to get some good information is, it, you know, just calories in calories out, just put yourself in a calorie deficit and, and that's the end of it. And, and that's all you need. And don't worry about this stuff. And, you know, I'd love for you to spend just a little time in talking about nutrition, what you've yeah. learned and how that's happened and, and how that is part of the evolution of that not being necessarily true. Yeah. And I think, you know, I was learning it in the club and then I was only in the club, maybe a year and a half. And then I was like, went to corporate and I was a corporate dietitian and I was launching virtual nutrition coaching for the first time. And so back then it was telephonic. It's not virtual yeah. the way we see virtual yeah. before now, but I actually, it was cool because I had already started to just see it. And then I got blasted with all this information and knowledge from naturopathic physicians, Jim Laval, one of my favorite, you yeah. interviewed him a couple of times. And I remember learning all this information, like it started to make sense. I was like, oh my gosh. And like, it's so hard as a fit pro. Cause when you learn information, you think of all the clients that you <laughs> didn't help enough. And you're like, oh, I got PTSD, PTSD. It was this, it was this. And it's so hard because I'm like, I was always a good coach, but like the more, you know, like you yeah. do better when you know better and you yeah. should. And I remember learning all this information and I, uh, part of my telephonic coaching is I would read lab chemistry on our members. So we offer lab testing. People yeah. could get a lab panel done. 
And you see it, you see it every day. You're like, oh my gosh, your cortisol is elevated. Oh, your DHA is low. That means your testosterone is low. And you start to see all these metabolic shifts. And I think the hard part for me was this is in healthy people. This is in people going to our clubs, working out every day, working on their nutrition, and they still have these metabolic interferences. So the calories in calories out methodology isn't the whole picture. So I always tell people it's not wrong per se. We are trying to create some sort of deficit. So your body knows, Hey, I'm trying to lose body fat. But gosh, if you're elevated in cortisol, if you've got inflammatory factors going on, your body's like, uh, uh-uh. uh, like it's not yeah. happening. And so what we always find is people that have starved themselves have done the yo-yoing. They had all these issues going on. So they are like, they think they don't have enough willpower. Um, you know, I find coaches that are like, you're, you're not journaling it. Correct. Are you? And it's like, <laughs> like, imagine being someone like that way. You're like, I'm telling you the truth. And then you give up because you think it's not for me. I don't belong in this industry even, but that's where I started to see it. So part of my job as the telephonic coach at Lifetime was reading lab reviews. So I actually read, I lost track, but it was like over 2000 lab panels of people. So I've talked to 2000 members and talked to them about what they were doing for their lifestyle, their fitness and nutrition, and then could see their lab chemistry. So I was always like, that was like the best apprenticeship I ever had, where I felt like so lucky so early in my career to have access to that information, but then actually to see case study by case study of what was happening. So when people say that to me and they're like, oh, it's just calories. I'm like, you don't even know. I want to know what you've done. I want to know all the members you've talked to, because I can assure you that even in a healthy population, people are metabolically at a disadvantage and they don't even know it. So that's always my big thing with people is if you don't know, like, why would we guess when we can know and get your lab markers done, which I learned some of that in college, like a little bit, not what I had gotten access to though, just working here, which was incredible. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I love to dive into, you know, some of the more popular weight loss, you know, or, or just diets in general, and have you talk through them and, you know, how are they best used? Cause you know, one of the things people will demonize the extreme, you know, keto is bad or this is bad. And, and obviously there's, there's ways to use diets to, I always say jumpstart. And, you know, some people at the end of the day, and, and you probably know this you know, as more than I do, I've, I haven't worked in the nutrition realm is if people aren't seeing results mm-hmm. and they're putting all this effort in, they're not going to continue. So are there ways in, in certain diets to use that might be good to start people on the, you know, on the path, get results and then wean off and then look at a more healthy or sustainable uh, program. So, you know, yeah. let, let's start out with, you know, obviously there's paleo and keto, Let's start Mm -hmm. there. Those are not the same. I would love for you to describe, you know, what those two guys are and how those are best used. Yeah. Um, I've been fascinated with the ketogenic diet for my entire career. And I always bring it up because I'm like, it's new to the public, new-ish, but it's like, we were learning about it with um, kids with epilepsy and using that clinically for a long time. And I think I like to go through like the pros and cons of each of it. Cause I'm with yep. you or I'm like, you need a little skin in the game. You need to see some results to feel motivated. Yep. And no matter which path of those two diets, it gets people back, back to real food eating, which is what yep. I like. Mm-hmm. And I will also say, and I still am unwinding this in clients is our fat phobic, like history is ridiculous. <laughs> like yeah. compared to like, and I like, I, I'm like, now I'm having like flashbacks of like talking to people about coconut oil and avocados like yeah. 10 years ago. And they are like, how dare you tell me to yeah. eat saturated fats? And now yeah. everyone's like, oh yeah, no coconut oil is good. I'm like, I know I've been saying that. It, so it, it's funny too. Cause now I'm starting to see the swing of it saying, oh no, it's not, it's not, it's, it's no. crazy. Yeah. Oh, it drives me nuts. But I will say if we are talking like fats in general, like getting people to get off of processed sugar is a good thing. So yeah. like for people to say, oh, keto is bad. It's like, well, no, let's talk about it because there's really great things about it. And I would say, I think I've had a few clients use it as a get started mm-hmm. program. And then eventually they kind of get, they wean off of it, but they never go back to their previous, which is why I like about it. It's like, hey, let's get your body used to digesting and metabolizing fat again, 
because, oh my gosh, do we all eat too many carbohydrates? I don't care who you are. Like most of us are over consuming it in a processed food form. And so I say it delicately because there is whole food forms of carbohydrates that are great. But I assure you, most of the people I work with, at least, that's not what they're doing. It's very processed. It's very in a box. So it's like, fine, if we want to do potatoes and stuff, let's do that. But I do think your brain feeds off of healthy fat. That's why we use that diet when people have seizures or experiencing issues with epilepsy. We should all be like tuning into that because as a nation, a lot of us are ending up with Alzheimer's and all these brain issues or brain metabolism. So why wouldn't we pay attention to some of those pieces to think, oh my gosh, you know what? Maybe I should try a keto-like type approach. And I will also say every client that I've taken through that approach, even if it was just for a few months, they're happy. They're happier. And I'm like, because you're eating fat. Like that is good. So I do think, and it reminds me of back in the day when Atkins was the thing, I would have clients that would use that as an approach, but then I'd be like, okay, you're doing like a lot of processed creams and like really it was, that was high fat, high protein. Then it was like, Ooh, okay. I like it, but let's like optimize it now. Let's make it like real whole foods. You're getting like vitamins and minerals and all the other good things that feed your metabolism. So there's pieces of it where it's like, you don't want to go so extreme that it compromises your food quality to stick to the diet per se. That's but great. man, do I love fat. So I could talk about that one all day. <laughs> well, and, and, and with, within that though, somebody goes on it. What, what, what are a couple of bullet point recommendations uh, to, if it, you know, to wean off, okay. They, they've starting to see results. They're getting results. They're not feeling like it's, it's sustainable based on just the way that they live and kids and yep. life. Yep. What, what's the way to properly wean them off Transition. so they're not yeah and so they're not yeah. gaining all the way back in the process of cha- of changing their diet again so if someone's doing like true keto because i will say there's there's like five layers of keto <laughs> there too but like the true keto where you're like measuring ketones because usually it's very high fat moderate protein low to no carb and i what i found is a lot of people doing like high protein high fat so that's a different that's big yeah so i would say if you're doing true keto I want you to start to up your protein because protein is the most satiating. It's going to balance your blood sugar the best. You're going to make any extra uh, energy from any extra protein too. So what I would say is you're not going to try to split your fat and carbs as quick as you're going to up your protein. So I always tell people like, make sure we're getting enough water because that's going to be critical as well. Mm -hmm. And then I gradually up their protein with that. And is there then a general, course, is there a general recommendation in grams of protein? It kind of depends. Well, you know, ideally we will stick to like the one gram per ideal pound of body weight. So if someone's 200 and they want to stay 200, I'm like, okay, let's focus on 200, 200. Got it. but I'll look at what they're doing previous to, and kind of transition them that way. Got That's it. where I'd say like shakes are critical. Those can be really yeah. easy tools to keep it to protein yeah. too, but it kind of depends on the person for Got sure. It. Got it. Okay. And then fiber, obviously. And fiber, yeah. fiber is one of those ones where I, it has a varying, um, how I recommend it for people mm-hmm. because a lot of people jump to like what they're supposed to do mm-hmm. and that can create digestive HE double hockey sticks. <laughs> like it's not yeah. fun for a lot of people. Yeah. So that's where I'm like, let's go for whole food sources of fiber, like a chia seed, something that's really gentle on their um, digestive okay. tract too, Got it. but then Got transition it. that way. Awesome. And, and so then, you know, keto versus paleo, well, uh, let's yeah. we'll go there. What, what, what is the difference yeah. there? And then some recommendations there. Yeah. So paleo, I have found to be an easier approach for people because I think it makes sense in their head. And I like the way paleo, it may, it basically brought up like how whole foods are kind of the way to go. I think that's what most people take from it. Now I love the, Hey, back in the day, this is how, this is how our bodies were designed to eat. I think that creates a lot of urgency for people and it makes a lot of sense. Um, but I will say over time, as our immune systems have evolved and a lot of things have evolved, there are certain things that people can tolerate that are not on the paleo plan. So whatever the case, I will say more women do well with paleo I found versus keto, Mm -hmm. um, keto sometimes for some people can, um, disrupt, you know, some of those metabolic barriers we're going, we're talking about. So it depends on, are they postmenopausal or premenopausal? Like where's their hormone balance at? So those are things that I will take with it too, because 
you're working with me, we're going to be checking your blood chemistry. Yeah. Well, and, and, and God, I mean, we're going, but, but this is so powerful too. I mean, and that's the thing is so many people just go out and they'll go, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try this. And then they, or they go to a general regular doctor yeah. and, and they're not going to look at the labs the same way. They're not going to no. look at, you know, what, what you're seeing. So the mm-hmm. ability, some people think it's a money grab too, but it's, it, it's no. part of the process of, Hey, do you want me to look at your chemistry and yep. then figure out what's going to be the best way for you to be working, which is what is amazing that you've done with coach Annika and, and, you know, yeah. we'll talk about detox in a bit here and how to even include that into the, into the mix if necessary. Yeah. Well, and I always tell people, like when I was in Palm Valley, my highest clientele was acting physicians and nurses. Like that was most of my clientele, <laughs> which is so funny. Yeah. And they, they would be the first ones. They were humble individuals. They're like, I learned a little bit about nutrition. And like, mm-hmm. I always talk about, I have this anesthesiologist who had to be masked up for 13 hours at a time. Wow. So talk about like preparing his eating. So he couldn't eat for 13 wow. hours. Like he had the long form surgeries. He was the wow. guy at that yeah. hospital to do that. Wow. So we were talking like high protein, high fat back then. I was like, oh, we got no time for carbs. We got to like really (laughs) sustain that energy. And I remember he was just like, you're the first person that like, you know, is recommending Atkins, like these things, like what, where did you come from? And I was like, well, no, it's just working on like your situation and that. And I always tell people my personal story, like when I was in my twenties, I had a lot of digestive issues and I did every test with all my physicians. I did all these endoscopic ultrasounds. And then at the end of it, they're like, you just have irritable bowel syndrome. And I was like, that's it. I spent my <laughs> thousands of dollars and I was in college yeah. and I'll never forget this. So I have to thank this guy someday. He was like, well, you're in nutrition school. You'll figure it out. And I was like, you, re- I will. And I <laughs> you know, like, tell this story because I don't eat gluten anymore because that was like the pivotal thing that my body was reacting to at that time. And people yeah. were like, I wish I could be given that advice like years ago. And it, it is the thing. So I will say, yeah, knowing who you are on the inside counts and it's so helpful. And then you'll know what is the right strategy for me in my metabolism right now, because it does change. And I think giving people reassurance there as they age, that it's not just the age that's impacting metabolism, but like, it's where you're at in life. Did you have kids recently? Do you have a high stress career all of a sudden? That's the thing that is the most pivotal thing to know. That's great. Great. Well, you know, and, and some of those fit in and I'm glad you were able to explain, you know, there, there's Atkins and you know, all the, you know, there's paleo, there's yeah. keto and low carb Fancy. and they're yes. all, they're all different. Um, but you know, a couple of other ones that I think are, you know, popular that I would love for you to chat through, you mentioned HCG. I don't think yeah. it's, you know, it, it's something the doctors usually are, are, prescribing in some way, shape or form, but you know, yep. there's a lot of bad press on it. I know I went on it and it worked fine yeah. for me and I transitioned off cool. the proper, proper way, um, several years ago, but I'd love for you to talk about that one. Yeah. So this was like the big, like aha for me. Cause again, it was my, I told you it was my first client at lifetime in Paul Valley in 2008. I knew nothing about it. I called the guy at corporate that was running nutrition. He knew nothing about it. And so in my head, I was like, okay, so you went on this low calorie diet and have this drug as a supporting tool. Your, your metabolism must be in the tank. Like I remember thinking that, and we did this testing back then called a calorie point where you can measure your resting metabolic testing and you would compare it to your, you know, estimated. And which is, that's why I always tell people with calorie counting too, like it's an estimate most of the time. And then the foods out there are estimated. So again, you're just putting, you're kind of setting yourself up to like fail. But so I was like a Shirley and it was a girl and her father that did it. And she was like 19. And I was like, we got to test it. I bet your metabolism is like in the toilet. And it wasn't, it was like elevated compared to their estimate. And I remember like, say what? Like, what is this? Like, again, everything that I had learned was like out the door then. So I was like, okay. But I remember with her and him specifically thinking, okay, because their goal was like, I don't want to do, you know, 900 calories anymore. I think that was the thing. And I remember learning there was variable techniques to using HCG. So that's the other problem is like, there's horror stories, but. Well, yeah, the one, the the most common one I always hear is 500, you know, and then, yeah, yes. I was yes. 12, I was 1200 at my 1200, size, yes. but, you know, but sorry to interrupt. Oh no. Most of the clients in Arizona, it was between nine and 1200 I yeah. found. Yeah. And I think with any miracle thing like that, right. Then people want in and then they do it wrong. And that's where I, 
we all get upset as like professionals, like, hey, there's people that actually do the research and do it right versus just kind of jumping on the bandwagon as a practitioner. So with them, they were really interested in like, hey, we want to level it up, but like, I want to make sure that I don't gain everything that I just lost. So it was like very more of like a refeeding paradigm with them. And they were with their doctor working on getting off the HCG side of it. And there's powerful things like I can't speak to it, but like a doctor would speak to like how it resets the hypothalamus. There's like all these really cool things that it does too. But on the eating side, it was like, okay, how do we sustain hunger and energy without you panic eating and like, you know, craving everything in your pantry that should be gone. So we basically stuck to a high protein, prioritizing protein at mealtime, high fiber vegetables, and then gradually increase their calorie consumption um, over the course of a few weeks. Yeah. And that that was the the thing that really helped me. And it helped me mentally is that they said that the doctor I was working with and, and said, you need to stay within two pounds of your, I, the, the weight that you want to be at. So we get yeah. down to where you want to be. And then he said, you need to stay within two pounds for two weeks. And it didn't matter, you know, morning, noon, night, it, it, it none of the, oh, well, I'm, I'm balancing. No, no. Yeah. He said, you can reset that set point. And I don't know if you've heard this or not, but it, it did work for me until yeah. I went off the, the deep end many years later of getting yeah. my Italian side and eating pizzas all the time. But, <laughs> Uh, but at the end of the day, though, that's one of those things that, you know, I, I think so many people blast at it because they just look at 500 calories. They don't understand yeah. the, the drug that's being taken. I understand the science. Yeah. Yeah, yeah awesome. for sure. For well, sure. And I think for people, they, you know, I, that's why I feel like I got the career I got because I don't judge people on the way at like what, yeah. and that's, I said, again, with eating, you just said it too, where it's like, you, there's a little bit of like frustration and this internal battle you're already facing. Cause you're like, Oh, I did this and I gained 20 pounds. And it's like, yeah. I get it. Like food, it's hard because food is something we do every day, but when life is out of control, it usually goes into our eating a little yeah. bit too. And there's such this emotional connection to it. So I was always like, I don't care what you've done. Like that, that, that doesn't make you a bad person per se, yeah. but like, let's figure out where your body's at now and what's the right strategies to get you where you feel great. Awesome. Awesome. Well, the rage right now, if you say 16, eight, um, everybody, <laughs> most, a lot of people know what that is, but intermittent fasting is obviously probably taken the world by storm here recently. Yeah. Um, and I'd love for you to talk about that one and kind of your take on that and, yeah, you know, the be- best sure. ways to do it. Yeah. So fasting is known as like the most forgotten cure, right? That's what's so cool about it is there's all those naturopaths and all those people that, you know, really live that type of lifestyle are like, oh, finally, like we're being heard and said, like, cause it is really cool. And I always think of like, if we went back to like all the fitness uh, diet advice, you know, that we used to say <laughs> yeah. It's so embarrassing now. Yeah. I didn't say it. I'm not going to claim yeah. that, but just, just take a Fedra and you'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> or like eat every three hours on that, you know, yeah. like it was just very, yeah. very lockstep. But I remember with fasting specifically, because I would have clients that had like, um, they would ask me like, I stop eating by seven. Is that okay? And I was like, well, when do you go to bed? Like, it doesn't like, there's rules that we try to follow. I'm like, well, let, tell me, are you in bed by nine? And they'd be like, well, I'm up till one. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, we should talk about that separately. But like, yeah. there's all these things that people felt bad about where there was now there's so much truth to it. And I do think like in general, like, especially we're in this world now where we understand gut health, right? Or we're starting to learn so much about it yeah. and your immune system. And knowing that we kind of put those things through stress by our diet and quality of food and how often we're eating. We never have this real fast. And so like breakfast is was created to break your fast, but how long is your fast? If you're up till midnight and then you're up at 5 a.m. chugging coffee, eating, you know, I always think the standard American breakfast is still like cereal and juice, but not to say everyone is there. Yeah, Yeah. coffee, but there's all that going on. So fasting allows your body to actually rest and like reset and optimize your metabolism as far as all your hormones and all the reactions going on inside your body. And your metabolism is hundreds and hundreds of reactions. I don't think people know that too. There's so many things going on to like make that happen. So I love the fasting because I think it actually makes sense for people. And then it actually makes them focus on, okay, I have this time window to eat. What, how do I really want to fill that? 
where it can go wrong with people is if you have issues with food and that's where you got to call a spade a spade. If you mentally have emotions with food and that's going to cause you to binge or cause you to overeat or plug in a bunch of stuff just because you know you have to stop at a certain time, it might not be the best thing for you yet. You might need to fix some things first. But in general, I do think it's optimal for a lot of us. And I think it's really challenging people to think, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm eating all day. So when does my body actually get to rest and digest? And I would say, I wasn't quote unquote calling it fasting several years ago, but when I was helping people with their sleep routines, I was finding so many people had disrupted sleep because they were drinking wine like the hour before bed or eating. And I'd be like, well, in your body, it's, I know you're not eating anymore, but your body is doing something. So you're not going to sleep and get into a deep sleep. So those are the things where I was like, we need to stop your eating window and sleep window. And now it's called fasting on the outskirts. And I, I love it. I think it's wow. one of the best things to try. And, and so I, I've heard some different recommendations from male to female with regards sure. to the fasting. Um, mm-hmm. Is that something you've heard? And would you mind sharing the details around that? Yeah. Um, I think it's individualized because again, like I think of your chemistry, it's not always men and women, but your yeah. chemistry will dictate what's going to work for you. Um, so women specifically usually are recommended less often fasting or less, uh, less time fasting. So they would have the shorter resting. And that is because we have individualized hormones. We naturally have different things going on inside of our body, which again, isn't always the case. It kind of depends on that. So I would say most often women are recommended a shorter window um, and not doing it as a long-term approach per se. Like if you're using it as a tool to lose weight, it's not going to be the one thing that gets you there either. So there might be other things that you have to follow through, but my husband, like he's fasted for three years. Yeah, He does the longer window, the 12, Mm -hmm. sometimes 16. Yeah. And it works wonders for him and he doesn't have digestive issues anymore. So I think it kind of depends yeah. on, are you doing it for fat loss, digestion? I mean, you should do yeah. it for all the things, but like yeah. depending yeah. on kind of what your current state is at too. And then within that window, and, and there's going to be another episode, we're going to go deep into fasting, but within yeah, that window, should. within the window of time to eat, Mm-hmm. What, what are, the, obviously if somebody's trying to use it to lose weight, um, yeah. that's the, the topic, what should be the things that they're eating? Because I think that's where some people miss out too, is they'll, they'll go 16, eight. And in the eight, like you said, they're just eating whatever, um, yeah. and thinking that, that it's okay. Yeah. You want energy system. Like you should have meant like the fasting is going to cause you to have like mental clarity. It should rebalance your energy. So you should be like ready to eat at your first meal, not like ravenous. So that's mm-hmm. always where if that's consistently happening, we got other stuff we got to work on before we go back to that, because now fasting is becoming a stressor to your body and not actually helping you get to your results. So just, yeah. I want to make that clear too. If you're trying it and you're like, I can't, I'm so hungry. It's like, okay, we yeah. got to work on some other things too, but, and which could be your circadian rhythm, which would be another great episode. Yeah. But for food, you should be, I would, I would prioritize protein no matter what. Cause again, that's going to sustain your energy. That's going to feed your lean tissue. That's going to make sure you're sending the right signal to your body. Like I want to lose fat, not my muscle and lean tissue. And then I always say fill in with fat and fiber. So essential fats being like olives, it could be fat on your meat that you're having for your protein. Um, you could also do like non-starchy vegetables to fill in for fiber. Mm -hmm. And then usually I say, if there's room for carb, you can, if your goal is fat loss though, I would save your carb for dinner because dinner with carbs at night, there's a lot of great research that it optimizes your thyroid function. Usually people are working out somewhere in the middle of that. So carbs after a workout is ideally better. Um, And that, again, it's dependent on the person. So wherever that fits in, I'm usually changing the nutrition strategy for that. But protein, fat, and fiber first. If you're still hungry, fill in with carbohydrates, preferably a whole food carb. So potato, rice, complex carb, even better. Awesome. And uh, one last one on that, and we'll we'll move on to uh, your bread and butter, the detox. Um, But- is the protein requirement that you mentioned earlier of a gram generalized a gram per ideal body weight yeah. is that still the same number that you recommend during a person who's doing fasting ideally yes okay. so for some men yeah <laughs> where it gets exactly. fun they have like it it can feel like if they're gonna just do two meals giant yeah. meals yeah, 200 like, grams wow. i gotta get 100 grams yeah that's where i <laughs> I got, I'm having so many flashbacks today. So I just think of like 
you know, the bodybuilders we worked with in clubs that were like clean eaters though. And they were like, you should see my grocery bill. I'm like, I know like (laughs) eating like that can feel almost impossible, but that's where I would say tools like protein powders can help. Yeah. It's not going to always be that way because ideally if you're losing weight and stuff, we're going to change nutrition when you get into maintenance nutrition too, yeah. but that would be a, a good next step too. Awesome. Sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's great. You know, and I, I, we can go into an episode on each one of these, which in, in the future, I know we are going to, but I, I appreciate you kind of condensing it and, and, and just yep. really setting it straight where there's, there's no black and white, everything no. you know, is ideal. And I think the biggest takeaway in anything that you're trying to do listeners out there or trainers or nutrition coaches that are, is the ability to have your labs and the ability to understand those things, to be able to dictate what's going to be the best thing for the person based on what they want to do and what's safe is, is, is key. So, you know, moving on then to obviously detox, there's a million different detoxes out there. Obviously we've had an amazing amount of success in, in what ours is. And so I'd love for you to talk about detox in general, and then narrow it down into kind of what you get in, in the detox kits that we have and the program that we have and and talk about the benefits and the successes that we've had with it. Awesome. So <laughs> detox at lifetime, it, I won't call it a mistake, but it was like, we were doing it without the current detox kit for the last 12 years. Mm-hmm. So I mentioned I was a telephonic coach reading labs mm-hmm. and was starting to see people were always reacting to food sensitivities. And that was a big thing for us. And that wasn't really out there yet. So people were like, say what, like an allergy. And it was like, no, but your mm-hmm. immune system is like on overdrive and you got all these things going on. So we kind of had like this protocol that we would put people through if we started to see certain patterns in their chemistry, which was take like an elimination diet, basically taking out inflammatory foods. Even if you weren't fully reacting to them, it was to help reduce stress on the digestive system. And then we would put them on supplements to help support their gut health so that they could react less to those foods eventually once we got rid of the stress and kind of healed their gut, so to speak. And so we were doing it so often, um, we were like, why don't we just have like this as a program? Like we should just do this. So we offer food sensitivity testing, but that's, that can be a high barrier for people too. Or they're like, I don't know if I want to do that test yet. Do you have something else we can start? So we started to kind of put it in a product to say like, well, Hey, we'll just give this system out for people that a want to try it. B are looking because they've had specific patterns pulled out on their chemistry Mm. or C like people kind of know if they are in like more toxic careers. So like, you know, I always, we had dental hygienists that were working with mercury for years and just exposed to stuff, or Mm. they might be a a city worker in the streets, laying pipe around smoke and exhaust. So there was always things that led people to a program like that. So we decided to put it in a box, you know, several years ago and we would just sell it in our cafe. But when it actually really took off as I started to do, because people liked it, but they were missing like the feeling of doing it with someone, because when you're doing something like that, you're like, oh, I wish I had a buddy or I wish I had a coach I could ask for. So we launched what was called virtual detox with coach Annika. And so you can join in on a class and actually I will take you through how to eat to help your body actually go through a detox. If you use the kit, it's filled with the right nutrients to act that your body needs. Cause I would say, like you were saying, there's all these things out there, but what we found is a lot of the detox products that we would want to put people on. I was like, well, wait, they don't have protein in it. You, if your amino acid pools are depleted, not having protein, your body can't detox. It actually gets more toxic. So again, light bulbs would go off for people like, yeah, when I did that juice cleanse, I didn't feel so great after it. And it's like, yeah, cause you didn't really detox. And so I would say the most scrutiny programs like this get is like, well, don't you have detox organs? It's a hoax. And, and we do like, I will say, yeah, you have several organs whose job is to detox your body, but hello, 2020 <laughs> and now 2021, like people are starting to kind of wake up. We're exposed to plastic more than ever. The yep. cosmetics that they we have to be working right. <laughs> yes. Bingo. Yeah. So it was just like, there's all these things. So I always tell people, it's not that your body isn't detoxing, but sometimes you do have a burden of too much and it can't, it slows down your pathways. And I see it all the time. Adults that have acne, I'm like, ding, 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 your body's toxic. And they're like, wow. what, what? And I'm like, well, your skin is your biggest organ. Its job is to release. 
yeah. if you're getting systemic acne, sometimes it's hormonal, but I will still say your clearance of your hormones is your issue, which goes back to detoxification. Wow. So it's huge of like yeah. what your body does. So I always tell people like the program is to give you the right eating. So it's low stress, but then actually help you get some of that toxicity out of your bubble because you're overly exposed. We all are, we all know that. But then what's so cool about our program is people get into it and they're like, can I eat like this forever? And I'm like, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the best part is that <laughs> I secretly introduce you to whole food eating and yeah. it's amazing and you'll, you won't go back. So. Well, one of the things you, problem. yeah. One of the things you said that I, uh, honestly, it's a, I've listened to you and I've been around it forever. And it's the first time that I've heard that is not having enough protein can actually lead to a, a lack of detoxification. Uh, God, that's powerful. I'd love for you to, can you expand on that and explain yeah. that a little bit more? Yeah. So the, again, we were talking about those organs and then I will just say metal, like full body metabolism, hundreds of things are going on. You need proper nourishment for that stuff to go on. So every cell of your body has the foundation of an essential fat. And then you also like protein is essential. Your body doesn't just yes. produce it. So your amino acids, the building blocks and your muscles and all of your body require protein to be taken in so that they can do their job and their function. Mm -hmm. So when people go on cleanses and it's like, oh, I just did vegetables and water and like vegetables are healthy. Yes. But I'm always like, well, what did you do for protein? And they're like, nothing. And I'm like, well, your, your pathways, your, you know, they, level stage one and stage two of detox cannot happen if they're depleted. So you can't like deplete protein. Wow. Like it's not, it's not, it's not healthy. And it not to mention it usually makes you feel terrible. Yeah. And that's where, you know, we didn't talk about like vegan eating as a strategy, but a lot yeah. of the clients that I have, like I, I totally understand their reasons to trial it, but yeah. a lot of them feel awful. And it's because their amino acids are, they're not getting optimal protein in anymore. So there's gaps in their nutrition. And that's a nutrition I really like to talk about is like how your body functions. Unfortunately, but fortunately yeah. I'm in the weight loss side of nutrition, but I'm like, there's yeah. so many cool things about eating food yeah. <laughs> like we could talk yeah. about, but it, it's yeah. critical for your body to do those features. So, yeah. And, and I, I honestly, I can't believe we forgot about talking vegan and I, I do want to get yeah, there, but okay. let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's finish this though, is, you know, with okay. our, with the detox kit that we have compared to, and, and, and there's so many others, you know, so there's just a liver detox and there's the, yep. you know, all the, can you speak to what is generally out there in detox programs and how is, yep. how ours is different and how, why we've seen success with it? Yeah. I would say generally speaking, there is specific, uh, detox organ, like you said, like liver detox, colon detox, specific things. And again, it's like if without testing to know which part of that pathway is disrupted for me, it's really hard to figure out, should I do a specific one or a whole system one? Yeah. I always tell people ours is a great introductory, like full system. Um, there's very likely you'd have a reaction, like some detox trials I've tried before, like I've gotten a skin rash or something. Cause it's very, um, elevated, I yeah. would say. So ours is a really great intro system to like fully look at and fully support your whole detox pathway, okay. stage one and stage two. Um, ours comes with a protein powder. So the detox nutrients that are going to support your body to detox, as well as nourish those organs are in a protein powder. So it's, and, and it, it's like a super vegan, convenient. Right? And it's a vegan. Vegan. Yeah, yes. It's a so it's rice and pea. So there's we call it hypoallergenic because it's yeah. free of any of those top allergens. Yeah. That's the eating plan we suggest too. But then it also has fiber and a multivitamin in it. So literally it's less than three bucks per shake for, and then the shake is literally a meal. So we have yeah. people drink the shake every day. And then once they get to day 10 and day 11, they up their shake to twice a day. And, and one other, idea. oh, go ahead. Go and ahead. one other thing too is, so people know out there is that uh, the, it's also a, a vegan protein with zero fillers and dyes and, and yeah. you know, yes. uh, aspartames and sweeteners and all of that, because obviously yeah. those things can lead to other issues. So it's not yeah. the general protein powder in the general sense. Oh, I would just love a talk on the history of supplements. Like yeah. all the stuff <laughs> just said. But yeah. yes, it is free of like a lot of stuff, which yeah. again, sadly, a lot of that stuff is still in the market. Like cause yeah. people just don't care, but for us, like it was a big deal to have something taste good, but then because detox nutrients have a medicinal flavor to them too. Yeah. It's not, I'm not going to lie and say it's a chocolate milkshake, but yeah. 
the flavors are so good that people are always like, I like the shake. I'm like, I know we worked on it for years because it's hard to mask yeah. some of that stuff too. But yeah. I like it because it all the nutrients you would need to detox are in the yeah. shake. So you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And and one last thing that's off awesome. And if you could spend a little time talking about it is just, you'd mentioned it quickly around when you join the detox program, it's not just the box and kit and you go, there's, right. there's e consistent email communication. There's the community, yep. there's those mm -hmm. things. Can you talk about, you know, yeah. the details of that and why that's part of the whole program? Yeah. So we have like a really cool, just like uh, resource hub on it's on the source at lifetime, but it's a whole PDF guide. And then it has all sorts of content so that if you want to detox your whole home, you can detox your whole home. Yeah. I do virtual classes basically quarterly right now that you can opt into. And what's cool about it is you actually don't have to do the kit. So if you're like, I just want to test the waters, like what's it like to eat the detox way to be coached the detox way, you can still join in for that. I will say most people end up buying the kit because they're like, no, I want results. I want to do the whole thing. I want to feel the whole thing. But we did it because it is it, it can feel hard. And, and that's what we were doing when we would lab test people. We'd put them on these protocols. And then I would like email them like, how you doing? That headache is normal. Give yourself two days, drink <laughs> your water, go in the sauna. And they're like, you should just make a class about that. I was like, I should make a class about that. <laughs> So my members and clients were the ones that kind of encouraged it. And they're like, you should do this. And I'm like, That's awesome. let's do this. <laughs> Perfect. So, and it's so, so huge. And, and, you know, we, we started it with this kind of thing is, you know, I, I got a great quote. It's progress equals happiness. And this is, it's because reaching a goal is satisfying, but only temporary, but progress keeps the momentum moving forward. It's a Tony Robbins quote. And it, it you know, a lot of this episode, so don't get me wrong, everybody, we're talking about weight loss, different mm -hmm. diets, and how to use those things, you know, and educate you on the pros and cons, but also how to educate and, and use those things to help you jumpstart seeing progress so that you can then continue on. So I want, I want to be clear to, you know, that we're, we're talking about it that from that perspective. Mark, yeah. Oh, go ahead. So Annika, you know, we, we've just talked about different diets, paleo and keto and fasting, and obviously a huge one. And, you know, with the, the movies that have been out is the vegan diet. And can you talk about the pros and cons in, you know, where that fits in and, and just generally speaking for people that are out there that are confused between the paleo and the vegan, you know, yep. why would I use either one of those? Yep. It's funny because when, again, when I entered this career, vegetarianism was still pretty popular. And I remember what I learned from meeting with clients, cause they would meet with me, like I'm vegetarian. I need help. Cause I'm trying to lose weight. I'm gaining weight following this. And I remember telling them like, I get what you're trying to do. And I will say what you're eating is showing is that you're a carbitarian because it was literally true. Like we would see that. And I was like, you've eliminated foods, but then you're the ones you're filling in don't actually even match what you were trying to do. And they're like, Oh, I didn't even realize that. So it's, it's cool to see it because what I get excited about the vegan side of things, um, because I, there's a lot of foods that I eat that are considered vegan because they're hypoallergenic. And I would say, if anything, people are learning like, wow, I react to dairy. And I say, yeah, two thirds of Americans do welcome to the party. Like we've, I've been dairy free for a long time because I react to dairy too. So I would say some of the positives is it can introduce you to whole foods eating. Um, it could introduce you to increasing your vegetable intake, which a lot of Americans, we are far from optimal. And yeah. I, it's hard for me sometimes too. I'm not going to say I perfectly eat nine servings every day because I don't. I try, but I don't. And then on the third side, it's introducing them to a bigger problem, which I would say is food production in America, because it's really not... I don't like that some people take vegan style and demonize meat per se, because I'm like, if we're going to talk about sustainability and how we treat livestock and animals, let's talk about the whole enchilada. Yep. Sac sacred cow. <laughs> there. Sacred cow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I always tell people, like, I usually, when I'm, I have a lot of vegan clients, I probably have maybe less than 10 now, but over my career, I've had a lot of vegan clients. 
And I will say when they want to do it right, they work harder than anyone. And I was, I will give them that credit where usually if they're seeing me, we're trying to figure out a lot of times it is a physique goal where they're like, Mm -hmm. I want to eat this way. I don't look the way though that I want to. And usually we're figuring out, well, how do we get more protein in you? Because your protein intake is subpar. Um, There's other nutrients that they're lacking B12. Uh, creatine is actually a very popular recommendation I give and people are always like creatine I'm like you it is literally impossible to get that through plant-based eating so yes you're going on creatine so usually I will say if you want to do it right and you're doing it for physique or the way that you look you it usually is going to come with a supplementation plan and most of my clients have a supplement plan but when you're going to go vegan we got to fill in a lot more gaps than if you're following a paleo style or a keto style diet Um, but I usually dig, I'm a digger. Like I said, most people cry when I talk to like, I like to dig, like, I would like to figure out why are you doing that? Because I want to make sure that I'm fulfilling them as a coach to encourage them to need a cheerleader. And I will say there is a lot of misinformation there. And that's, what's hard is it's like, okay, who told you that? Or misinterpretation of a study that they were told, or they watched a documentary. There's a lot of documentaries on it. And I'm like, okay, but let's talk about where you live and what you want to do as far as your goal is. What's your lifestyle? What's your stress like? Does your body detox regularly? Do you know that or not? So I usually dig a little bit to figure it out. And usually I'm not saying all the time, because I definitely have clients that are like, no, I'm doing it for animal cruelty or like mentally, emotionally, they have to be there. But for a lot of people I have discovered, they are like, well, I just thought it was healthy. And it's like, okay, well, let's talk. Like, but your interpretation of the diet hasn't created a very healthy plan because if it's all processed foods, no, I'm not, I'm not going to say that that's healthier than eating sustainable meat with plants and whole foods. I won't, I will never put my credential on that line. And maybe that's part of why people love or hate me too, is I'm pretty direct and I will, but I will treat you like family. I'll treat you like, if you're my dad, I'm going to give you solid nutrition advice. So if you want to eat that way, I will help you get there. And I will show you all the things you have to do to get optimal for your health, but I'm going to make you test your blood tests. And I will say that's where I see a lot of it too. And a lot of the uh, issues in metabolism usually match how they're feeling too. And we're like, we got to fix this. So there's good and bad, but I usually try to help for sure. That's great. And and, and that's the key is going to a professional that's got the experience that uses lab testing. We've said this time and time again, not just making general blanket statements because they saw a documentary and they switched the way that they've eaten. Mm -hmm. Well, this is great. And, you know, so to, you know, kind of wrap it up, you know, Coach Annika, I know that there's our new virtual side um, where pretty much before it was only lifetime members were able to get access to things. I mean, they could buy the supplements and things like that, but they couldn't get access to our people. Um, now with our virtual membership, we have full access to, to really reach anybody in the United States and in Canada. Um, so I'd love for you to spend some time talking about, you know, what they get in that and and how to go about that. And we'll obviously include links into the, the, uh, body of the, um, email that we send out or in the, in the show notes. Yeah. It's something I'm really excited about because we call it omni-channel fitness because that, I mean, that's what happened over the last years. We had to get creative. The whole industry did of like, how can we help people that can't get to our destinations, whether because they didn't have access or they live far from them. So I've never been more excited to work at Lifetime than now, ironically, even though this year was, you know, crazy, but So we have a $15 a month membership and within it, you get access to all sorts of great content and tools and tracking, but we call it training with membership. So you can actually get into a program via the app. I have a few of them, so you can find me and I can be your coach and literally take you through um, what it feels like to be a trainer digitally, but then keep you accountable to your workouts and then give you access to all sorts of great stuff. So I've done digital programs since 2016 for our access members. So this is the first time that you can be a non-access and get access to programming and coaching and honestly, just all the stuff to keep you on this journey when the world is so convenient to not be healthy. And, and that's a, a, for 15 bucks, there's the, there's up, there are programs that you get coach Annika for 15 bucks a month. And then there's obviously the buy-ups if they want to, yeah. you know, do more and more individualized, um, uh, you know, coaching with you as well. Correct. 
Bingo. Yep, absolutely. And we have other programs too. Like I lead the 60 day challenge. That's we do that twice a year. We've done it since 2010. And I have been the digital coach since 2016 for that guy. And that's a lot of fun too. So I have a lot of yeah. stuff that if you want to feel that and, you know, get access, get a little positivity and some coaching, yep. you've got all sorts of cool options. Well, and, and, the, and to kind of finalize everything we'll, we'll leave on that one is obviously we have a 60 day that's coming up. Um, mm-hmm. And we, we've talked about this as the theme of the episode of things that can help you jumpstart you seeing results, whether it's in, in this case, it's a lot of been around diet, but, you know, spend some time talking about the 60 day and the virtual option that people have, whether, and and then there's the in club option as well. Yeah. So the 60 day, if you want to talk about a mistake, (laughs) it was launched (laughs) with like no goal. We didn't think anyone would sign up for it. And we launched it in 2010 and 20,000 people showed up like the day we kicked it off. We were like, Oh gosh, people like this. (laughs) And we fell on our tushas. Like it was a disaster operationally, but I took it back then. And I was charged with like, fix this, make people not hate it. And like figure out a better way to like encourage thousands of people to do something. So our 60 day went virtual in 2020 for the very first time. And we always had virtual elements such as like digital PDF guides. We always had workouts in the app and online. Uh, I always emailed them as the virtual coach, but a lot of the stuff was in club. And with clubs closing, we were like, gosh, people need something like this, but we didn't want to create something that they couldn't do. So we went virtual and we kind of are keeping it virtual right now, but we have another one coming up March 6th. Um, I haven't done a March one in years. We always used to do it in February and August. So this will be our first March one. But the theme is all about hello, fresh start, because we all had a year. Um, Maybe we trialed it. Maybe some of us maintained our fitness. Maybe we really lost it, but it's like, the grass is green. It's getting greener. Like let's reset, let's do some new things. And so you can join in, you can still sit with the trainer and club for a consultation. So if you're comfortable with that, if that's something that's interested, that's completely optional, but we would absolutely encourage it. And literally over the next 60 days, we're going to give you what to do every day with your fitness and your nutrition and your lifestyle to get going towards whatever that goal is you have. And I think for a lot of us after the year, it is weight loss, unfortunately, but it is the reality of what happened. And I think what people were most shocked of when we did one in the holiday season was they're like, wow, I didn't realize I needed something like this. This is like so inspiring and motivating. And there's something about knowing when there's 10,000 people doing it with you that you're not the only one in there. Yep. And it really, we try to set people up with success and get rid of all the barriers for them and give them all the resources to do it the right way. That's awesome. And, and like we said, community, seeing progress, getting the coaching, you know, it, it's for, you know, if you're a virtual member, it's going to be 15 bucks for the virtual side and then 20 bucks to yes. enter into the program. And basically for 30, what, 35 bucks, you're, you got, you know, a whole lot that you're getting to get started and get past and, and get you healthier. Cause that's what this is about. You know, there's obviously weight loss goals, but it's also a way to get you healthier so that, you know, who knows what comes into the future. Uh, you're able right. to, bal- you know, balance that out and, and take care of it. Well, coach Annika, it, it was an absolute pleasure and I'm sure we will have you on again and again. There's so much <laughs> that we could talk about, but hopefully everybody takes away what this concept was, you know, really based around, ways to start to see progress so that you you continue to move forward and really tearing down some of those uh you know facts and 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 falsehoods around different diets and how and when they should be used so anything else that you have that you want to share with the audience before we go i don't think so i would say honestly like start tomorrow that's my best advice like it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect you can optimize your next meal honestly just do something. Exactly. That would be my best advice. It's so powerful. Well, thank you so much and, and can't wait to, to see you in person one of these days soon and, and tell everybody over there uh, I said hello. So thanks for joining us, Donica. Thanks, Jason.